morning, South Africa, and a very warm welcome to you. This is Afternoon Express. My name is Jeannie D, and boy, do we have a show for you. I'm so excited because it's been quite a while since we've had a designer in the loft, but today that all changes. We've got such an amazing designer that has made some of the most beautiful creations on the South African red carpets. Kuteria Leboheng uh, Kekana is the creator of Kuteria and George, and he is here, and he has got such beautiful pieces pieces to show us. Also, for Winner Home on Afternoon Express, today we chat to the owner of a company called Sangangelo that makes some of the most beautiful surfaces. And we also catch up with our Winner Home judge and CEO of private, pro private property, Simon Bray. And in the kitchen, it's all about Mexico with Danilo. Indeed. I want you to say it with me, yes, we Mexican today on the show on Afternoon Express. I think that's Spanish. We just did a That's Spanish okay. thing. Me okay. Megan Daniels is joining us in the loft today. In the kitchen, we're making something super Mexican. It's all about finger foods on the show this entire week. We haven't seen you in these parts for a while. Welcome back. I uh, know. Thank you. I wish I could say I was in Mexico, but... Oh, uh, no. no. You were just busy whipping up something delicious. <laughs> Let's just put it there and then make people's minds at ease. And don't forget, if you want to cook anything we make on the show, you can go to our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. But I thought, seeing as it's a Thursday today, I wanted to get straight into the cooking, if we could, because the weekend is upon us and I have no recipes planned. So okay, teach no, me. No, no, that's a problem. Teach me, oh great Let's one. Let's get straight into it. Okay, so we are making chicken quesadillas today. Mm -hmm. Right. Quesadilla. Now, what's the difference between a tortilla, quesadilla? This is a wrap. tortilla. tortilla. <laughs> okay. So that's a tortilla. You use it for a quesadilla, and then a wrap is rolled up, and okay. a fajita is like everything mixed together, and a, we're gonna make a quesadilla today. Okay. Let's yeah. just focus our energy <laughs> on making a quesadilla using a fajita. Using heater on the pan. We, we, we're using tortilla. Okay, cool. Authentic corn tortillas. Okay. So basically what you're going to start doing, just a little bit of canola oil. And then you're going to fry it for chicken breast so okay. they're nice and golden brown. Yum. So because of TV, we're going to switch it out. Cool. So we've already done it. So basically, once it is browned, you just remove it from the heat, shred it. Yeah, but let it cool down obviously before this. you start using your hands, shredding your chicken. Yes, obviously, please. you don't want to burn always, your fingers. Always be safe. Mm. So chefy fingers, I think. So <laughs> shred it, and then we've got... Over here, we've blackened some corn. Okay, what does That's, blackening corn mean? It's just literally in like a, a pan with a, bit, a little bit of oil, and then you get some color on it and oh, throw nice. some aromatics in it. It's like so, what we call grilling it. Yeah, mm. as well. <laughs> so we've got that with some garlic, so just cool. a little bit of aromatics to throw in oh, yum. to this over here. That's going to add the sweetness to the chicken? Yeah, and it's so authentic, I think, as well. And then we've got some barbecue sauce. Oh, can I bring that for you? Which you can chuck that in here. All of it? Yep, go for it. Oh, yummy. So this is going to create all of the liquid within the sauce itself. And just that yummy. gooey greenness, Ooh. I think it's so important That's for like delicious. a wrap. So we've got it all going like this. And then again, we're going to switch out the pans. Okay. Which I think is going to be quite cool. So here, you can just keep mixing the, that together. That I can do for you. I can yeah. do anything in this kitchen when it comes to just not making the food. I can mix it. That I can do. <laughs> okay, so, so you what's mix next? pretty well. Okay. Whoops. So we've got some tortillas. So we're literally going to just put it on the bottom. Okay. Can put up the heat a little more. Some people generally put their tortillas in a microwave to heat up. Is that not okay? Oh, uh, you can. I think if they all stuck together, you normally buy them from the shops and they're mm -hmm. all stuck in one big thing. 10 seconds into the microwave and you can separate them all. Okay, cool. cool. So that's fine. So from here, I'm going to come in here. Cool. I actually removed this from you because I think this is mixed, so yeah. it's ready to go. So you can literally put it in the center of that. Tada, how much? You can go for it. Oh gosh, this thing is okay. so slippery. I feel like, I feel <laughs> like I'm making a mess this. of this. <laughs> how about you scoop it out because you've okay. got the better scoopy device. Are you? There okay, we go. There that we I can go. help you with. Oh, there yum. Okay, so this is the basic filling that we're making here. Yeah. Okay. So you see, it's so quick and simple. It's like the best thing for a midweek treat, I think. Oh, nice. Um, so instead of just a wrap where you just, you know, have it like that, it's something just more authentic and yeah. delicious. I think people also will get a little bit of a surprise because anyone can make a wrap, I hope. I hope everyone can make a wrap. <laughs> but if you can't, obviously make a wrap. But then if you, you can make a wrap, this is a nice step up. It's one level up. Definitely. I think okay. we can put the, some of the mozzarella in. Sure. So in a traditional quesadilla, you always have like queso fresco, which is like Don't traditional know what mean. Mm -hmm. cheese. Queso is cheese. Okay. So this will like start melting and it will be absolutely beautiful. Queso, what's next? Get it, okay, so That's what's... not your problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, so we can just do a little bit of salt and pepper in here. Sure. Just a pinch of that. 
So I don't actually like to add the seasoning, seasoning here. Yeah, which is interesting. Because when you fry it, I feel like you burn the black pepper. So many people season like steaks with salt and pepper, and then yeah. you like literally char oh. grill it and it burns the pepper. It's just, yeah. Doesn't add anything to like the dish. To okay. And then this is going to be over here. And then I think we'll flip it a little bit later. Okay, cool. Fantastic. Well, it seems pretty simple to make. The filling sounds super delicious and super filled with flavor. So if you guys want to make these incredible dishes, all you have to do is go to our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. There you can find the recipe and the shopping list and cook along with us on Afternoon Express. Everything is super, super amazing on this show. Now, Holland's the world's best mayonnaise, wants you to join them in an unmissable mouth-watering experience. My wife is busy watering while we say this. Where you and a friend will be treated to a burger making masterclass by Afternoon Express's very own Clem Pedro, where he will prove that a burger just isn't a burger without that unmistakably smooth texture and rich, creamy taste of Hellman's. Now, following the masterclass, you will test out your new burger making skills at the Hellman's Rock Your Burger food truck while on its national tour, where you will create your own signature Hellman's burger, as well as show off your very own selfie bun. That's right, your face on a burger bun. It's absolutely awesome. Yesterday's winner is, drumroll, Bianca Shante Baluto for her Hellman's Marinated Bright Chops recipe. So congratulations and thanks for sending that one through. To enter your recipe and to enter the competition, go to our Facebook page where the daily Hellman's post will be and tell us what's your signature dish featuring the world's best mayonnaise Hellman's. Please note that this competition is only available to the viewers living in the Johannesburg area. T's and C's applying can also be found on afternoonexpress.co.za. So get entering and tell us how you hashtag rock your burger with Hellman's and Afternoon Express. We'll see you after the break. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, there's nothing we love more on the show than some beautiful designer fashion. Today, we're joined by co-founder of a label that has created red carpet pieces for some of SA's top celebrities, the likes of Boiti Tulo, Terry Petto, Dineo Makhetsi, just to name a few. Now, their intelligent design and flair for creativity, coupled with their attention to detail and keeping up with the latest trends, have seen the brand grow to star status in just a few short years since their inception in 2013. Now joining us in the laugh from Kriteria and George is Kriteria Lebohang Kekana. Welcome oh, to Afternoon Express. <laughs> oh thank you for having me today. Now firstly just the name Kriteria and George yeah. sounds designer. Yeah. How did your journey begin? Oh well uh, funny enough is I was working for you know another entity you know in, within the fashion industry yeah. Uh, and George was actually showcasing that at this, this, the, the Fashion Week. Yeah. Um, and I was the brand ambassador, and I just, I just sort of loved his, his workmanship and his craft. And I, and I thought, and I pulled him aside. I said, listen, dude, you know, I would like to, to sort of uh, one day and work with you. You know, yeah. fast forward, that was in 2009. Uh, yeah. And then now fast forward, 20, 2013, I bumped into him in Johannesburg at Gandhi Square. Yeah. He was taking a bus to, to, you know, to, to work. And I, and I said, hey, you know, can we go back to what we spoke about? And yeah, here we are. Amazing. Fast forward now, it's there's Kiteria and George after two years. Yeah. Was fashion something that was always in your blood? I mean, did you know from young that this is what you wanted to do? Uh, funny enough, it's it's both me and George, uh, you know, we've been, we've watched a lot of Bold and the Beautiful as we're growing <laughs> up. So we have that, uh, you know, Rich Foresters and, uh, you know, and, step, and, and, and I oh, think yeah. there was a spectrum. Well, Taylor is Taylor. like the best. And the spectra of fashion, The spectra yes. fashion, yeah. And I came to Johannesburg and I studied ballet. That's what basically what, what I studied. So sort of that, that the focus of, um, you know, the, the, the fashion wasn't really in my, my head as much. Yeah. But I loved ballet and I loved dance. So I think the influence there with, 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 with lots of costumes and with yeah. his influence with, uh, I don't know, watching the Bolton Beautiful, I guess is what created Kitra and George today. Yeah. Well, I love that you said you love ballet because yeah. for me, what makes a really good designer, yeah. it's important when you put on a dress and it feels like it was Absolutely. made for you. Yeah. But it's the understanding of the female form. Yeah. So that obviously is why you've been able to create such amazing dresses. Oh, thank now you. tell me about some of the ladies that you've dressed. Um, we've dressed, I mean, when we initially, when we, we, when we started, uh, we really didn't have, you know, the foot in the door, like to, yeah. to dress how did, the stars. I mean, how, how did you go up to your first celebrity and say, I'm dying to put you in one of our gowns? Um, we started with, uh, I forgot her name now, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> it must have been really important. That's the focus in January, actually. Uh, so the focus January for Metro FM. Yeah. Uh, we started with her and we approached her and said, listen, uh, we'd like to do something with you. I mean, we're new guys in the business and we'd like to try something else. And I, I guess with her, a lot of, um, you know, talents and you know, the exactly. celebrities in the industry saw that, saw our work through her. And... Um, 
since then, we had the likes of uh, Terry Petto, you know, Tidineo Moketsu, which is, you know, she's the face of our brand, uh, Boy Titulo now. Stunning. Um, so it's been, it's been a journey, and I, and, I, and, I, and I cannot even begin to thank, you know, God, and I guess, you of know, course. I have got the most amazing partner, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but it hasn't always been a, 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 like an easy journey for yeah. you. I read somewhere that you had said, you know, it, it looks so glamorous and it looks yeah. so easy, but behind the scenes what people don't know is that it's difficult to make money doing this. Absolutely. And people maybe don't have... How, are, how can designers get more support to be able to finance themselves, to be able to create some of the designs that you do? Yeah, um... It, it, it is it is quite difficult and a lot of people because they see the glamorous side of it exactly. they don't know the, the the work that goes behind the scenes yeah. I mean when we started we literally didn't have you know the backup you know from from anybody else yeah. uh, we literally had to save our own money to get the dresses out there sure. but luckily enough is that all the girls that come through Kiteria and George they pay towards you know the fabrics they pay towards their garments so oh, really? and then the do they keep the dress uh, no 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 actually they don't uh, oh, wow. because it's quite a it's it's quite expensive to to create sure. an, you know couture gown and also you do have other families you know people that work behind the scenes that needs to be paid so that is there is quite a lot but i would i would think that i mean if there could be more uh, 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 um, uh, organizations that are created or funding that is created yeah. or, or banks can come through and participate and just sort yeah. of we can focus on the textile industry in this country so it can grow. Exactly. Uh, I think that a lot can be can be done and just going back and, and into like your, 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 your forums where, where there is, what do you call them? Um, like design in Darbus. Like, like design that. in Darbus. Yes. More platforms for young people and more sure. designers to showcase and, and, and bring in more business and private business to invest in, in these uh, exactly. young and upcoming designers. Now, you've described your style as being sophisticated, elegant, and also having quite an architectural edge. Yeah. How would you say that architectural edge comes into to that flow of, of elegance? We, we live in a city, uh, you know, Johannesburg, it's, it's, it's really... it's. It's got so much flair and there's so much history. Exactly. Uh, the, the, the buildings, the architectural, you know, aspect of things. Um, uh, obviously, also where I come from, I'm from Limpopo, you know, and George is, is originally from uh, Lesotho. Yeah. So also, the, 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 I think our influence, our backgrounds, influences how we design. You know, uh, I think um, Johannesburg, with its richness in, 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 in culture, there's yeah. diversity in people. I think I, I, I mean, there's so much to absorb, and uh, exactly. I mean, every day you 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 sponge on something. There's yeah. something to create and uh, and, yeah. and really uh, take reference from. Yeah, I suppose it's just inspiration everywhere, everywhere. in Johannesburg. Yeah. Now you dressed Danielle McKenzie, who yeah. we had on the show on yeah. Tuesday, yeah. and a whole host of other celebrities. Yeah. Take us through the Samas as well, and awesome. Danielle's dress that she wore for her film premiere. Yes. Tell us about them. Um, the summers. Uh, well, first, I would like to start with Boiti Tulo because I mean, that, that's I mean. what I created. <laughs> I know. But that was ridiculous. Oh, I mean, um, how stunning does she look? Yes, that, that look actually was from the, the Safters. Yes. Uh, but uh, recently we, we created a dress that, I mean, I guess... The controversial the dress the contro at the Sarmis. Controversial you did the controversial dress. dress. Yes. But that was somebody had photoshopped in a Absolutely. part of her yeah. body. Yeah. And who does that? Seriously, that really wasn't cool. But the dress, I thought, was very daring. It was. You love was. to show a little skin. I, I, she loves to show a bit of skin. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that, you know? Uh, and also, I think with with uh, I mean, we, we've just the likes of um, uh, what's her name, Lorato Khanyaho as well. Yeah. I mean, she came, and a lot of people didn't focus on her. And I just thought that there's a lot of negativity within people that you have yeah. to appreciate wow. uh, uh, what what you know people bring forth sure. uh, without finding faults. Exactly. You know, if a dress is ugly, it's ugly. It's okay. But don't go to, 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 to extremes where now you have to now demean somebody and just and be take, nasty. And be sure. nasty about it. So. Okay, but take me through that creative process. So yeah. when a celebrity comes over to visit you, how much input do they have versus your creative integrity into what you're putting into the dress? Uh, you know, Jeannie, the, the girls are different. You're different from, you know, your co-hosts. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and I think we allow the girls to come in and feel free uh, to actually have you know, a, a, a suggestion. Yeah. We sit down at the table and we have to understand each, each girl's, you know, character, 
What yeah. is it? Some girls are conservative. Boyd is not conservative. Dineo, she's a lady. Yeah. Uh, 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 so I, I feel like a lot of designers sort of shut that down out and they just create what they want. Exactly. But also it's a collaboration. I mean, we, we did address also for, uh, for, for Mini Glamini as well. I mean, she's quite sexy and she just yeah. wants to sort of be playful and show the sexiness. Definitely. So it's all about bringing in the girls in and then we sit down and me and George, we come up with concepts and we create from there. So you've brought us some pieces today. Yes. I'm so excited <laughs> to see what you've got. Yeah. Let's bring out the models and see some of the most amazing pieces from Kateria and George. Come on, girls. Oh, I saw Boyty wear that at the Met, actually. Yes, yes, yes. She looked amazing in it. That was that was one of our, our proud dresses, because it's very difficult to actually, you know, use the combination of mesh and velvet. Yeah. And I thought that was daring, and she's young, she's Definitely. flirtatious, and I, you know, we love it. Listen, Boyty doesn't love fabric, but if I had that booty, I mean, I would <laughs> totally wear just as little. Yeah. <laughs> amazing. Yeah. And that colour's great as well. Absolutely, yeah. Wow, absolutely beautiful. Who's your favorite person to dress? Whoa, oh, uh, South African, African women. <laughs> yeah. They are my favorite people to dress. Really? This is yeah, beautiful. And, yeah, and this, this, this one, we just uh, recently did it for uh, Mini Glamini for the Sports Awards, or PSL Sports Awards. And uh, that's what basically she wanted. She wanted to be flirtatious and without it being too much. And uh, I guess she got the attention that she, she wanted. Definitely. Yeah. That is lovely. That's Great colour so as well. Nice. I can see you like working with bold colours. Yeah. What, what, what oh, I... showstopper. <laughs> Who, who's worn this? Uh, this was worn by Lisa Laurie, um, uh, Miss SA 2015. Yeah. And I thought she looked absolutely incredible. I mean, we just made a bit of adjustments to it, but I mean, it is, it is the Katarian George colour I got. Exactly. A bit of skin, you know? Yeah, the Katarian George girl has to be quite comfortable with who she is. You have to be. Because you are that kind of, you know, we represent strong women in, in yeah. South Africa. Sensational. Thank you. Um, there we can see your architectural go. inspiration. Yes, and this was worn by Fix. Actually, two, two people wore this. I mean, there's Sarah Kolovsky. Uh, she wore this at Cannes uh, Film Festival. And, uh, and Fix says she's from uh, 5FM. 5FM, yeah. Yeah, so. Wow. Is one of the dresses Don't you sometimes wearing. panic when a dress gets reworn? Because I know, I mean, I can hardly wear a dress to more than once if yeah. it's something so daring. But dare somebody else wear it to an <laughs> event afterwards? Well, I mean, we, we call the girls I and mean, if they're comfortable. You know, some girls are comfortable enough to say, okay, you know what? It's not in this country. They're not going to see it. They're going to see it at a con. So it's okay. Exactly. You know? so, so that's how we, we have a relationship. And also, we don't want them to be uncomfortable about it. Exactly. Dress. Well, absolutely sensational. Thank you so much for oh, bringing them you. through for us. They thank are you. glorious. And thank may I so wish much. you the best going oh, forward you in your career. Me. Lovely. So, now where are we going now? Recently, I met up with tea master Dinesh at a prestigious hotel in Cape Town for a cup of delicious tea. All of that coming up after the break. Welcome back. You're on SABC3 with Afternoon Express. Now it's time to share another moment with Five Roses. South Africa's favourite tea is expertly blended to ensure that it consistently remains of the highest quality. It is this ethos of commitment to excellence that Five Roses puts into making the perfect cup of tea. This week, uh, this week actually, I met up with tea master Dinesh Vijay Wadner at African Pride's 15 on Orange Hotel to discover the bold and distinctive taste of Five Roses selected African blend. The 15 on Orange Hotel is at the heart of Cape Town's thriving city and a popular rendezvous for those who like to unwind in style. I'm now joined with tea master extraordinaire Dinesh to learn more about the full-bodied flavour of African teas and what makes the Five Roses Select African Blend so special. Dinesh, tell me about African teas and what makes their taste so distinctive. In Africa, the agroclimatic conditions, the strain of Camellia sinensis that is planted, and also the manufacturing method. All of these put together bring out a really distinct, bold, full-bodied tea. Um, 
there are many levels of quality, if I may say so. And we at Five Roses are extremely pedantic about the quality of tea that we buy. And we have chosen a handful of estates to give us the ideal quality and the, well, and the balance of the blend that we have put together here. This tea is absolutely delicious and it's got quite a bold, strong taste. We have our preferences for wines and for chocolates. The same goes for tea. So we, in here, what we are trying to do is to give a really robust, strong, full-flavoured, full-bodied cup of tea using only the very select best African teas from estates in Kenya, in Malawi and other areas in Africa. Now I have to know, what is the perfect way to make this cup of tea? Would you add milk? How many tea bags would you throw in? How would you make the perfect cup of African tea? So there are a few golden rules to making a good cup of tea. The first is you need to buy a good quality tea. Uh, you cannot make a good cup of tea out of a poor quality tea. Then you need freshly boiled water. And why we say freshly boiled water is the more you boil water, you're taking oxygen out of the water and it makes the water go flat. With flat water, you can't get a really full tasting tea. It's like drinking a flat beer or flat soda. And then you need the correct portions. Uh, what I mean by this is a, a tea bag is generally 2.5 grams and to get the fullness of that tea bag you need to use approximately 200 milliliters of water. So for those who use mugs you need to make sure that you don't really fill the mug up. You just put it three quarter way through so that you get the correct amount of uh, water into it. Otherwise you could have a really weak cup of tea because there's too much of liquid. And then lastly, brewing, uh, brewing needs to be for three to five minutes. Uh, tea is a very complex agricultural product and it has many enzymes. And the longer you brew it, you get all those bitter enzymes coming through and it would taste extremely harsh and bitter. If you don't brew it for long enough, you are not going to get the fullness of the tea. So generally it's a three to five minute rule that we observe. And then, of course, after that, if you want to add milk, you must always take the tea bag out because otherwise there'll be milk and other water that is going to get uh, into that tea bag. So you put the milk to whatever color and taste that you like. Perfect, the perfect cup of tea. Oh boy, and the perfect accompaniment to the best cup of tea. What do we have here? It's a vanilla creme brulee with a dulcet ganache and a black tea jelly on top of it. And we serve it with a chai spiced ice cream. Enjoy. Thank you. I think you should start. <laughs> Well, it's clear that a lot of love and care goes into creating the perfect cup of Five Roses tea and commitment to excellence, bringing you a wide range of high quality, superior tasting and refreshing teas to make every tea time an occasion to be shared and enjoyed. I really was born for delicious tea and tasty treats. Now, we're giving away a fabulous Five Roses gift pack every week containing an assortment of their delicious teas. To win, simply SMS the keyword Five Roses, your name and city to 33728. SMSs are charged at 1 Rand 50 and T's and C's do apply. And of course, it's on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za for details. Join us again next week. And until then, remember that nobody makes better tea then you and five roses. After the break, it's time for Winner Home on Afternoon Express, so stay right where you are. Welcome back. It's time for Winner Home on Afternoon Express, where our three design contestants are each creating a beautiful apartment on the Valdivia Estate, and they are working closely with Caesar Stone. Now, Sangengalo is the fabrication company that the contestants are using to create their Caesar Stone designs and also responsible for fabricating and installing the entire polo village on the Valdivia, where the apartments are located. Today, we have the owner, Neville Owen, to tell us more about this wonderful product and what exactly they do at Sangengalo and how they have been working with our contestants contestants in this contest. Welcome to our loft. Thank you so much. Neville, it's so good to have you here because our contestants are working so hard and I think it's time for us to give them a bit of a break in terms of design because they're working on this guest bedroom, lots of things to get done. How have they used Caesar Stone in their rooms? One of the first items that we manufactured for them was a bench, ah. um, which is quite a chunky bench. We created it out of 20 millimeter Caesar Stone. Uh, the color we used was uh, raw concrete 
and we mitered it up to 40 millimeters uh, to create the, the look of a chunky bench. Sure. That was one of the first items that we manufactured for the designers hmm. for the guest bedroom. I saw that also someone used it as a headboard. How do you use yeah, stone as a headboard? Right. Yeah. Explain that. Uh, that was a first for us. Um, but what we did was, again, we mitered the 20 millimeter material uh, up to 40 mils. Uh, we created a headboard um, and we, it had a integrated bookshelf above the headboard um, with a Caesar stone behind the books sure. and it came out pretty well. It's so cool to see them experimenting so much because our viewers are, are very excited about the contest because they're going to win one of these homes and know that the, the fabrications that are inside there and all the finishes are going to be theirs at some point. So yeah. it is exciting for them and I'm sure you must be excited working with Caesar Stone because it's such a versatile product, isn't it? Yeah, no, it certainly is a versatile product. I think one of the key factors for me is the stability of the product ah. uh, versus natural products. So Caesar Stone is a product consisting 93% quartz powder, 7% mm -hmm. resin. So when our artisans are working with it, it's a stable product and they actually enjoy what they're doing as they work oh. with it. So we can cut, shape, polish, mitre, and they do it with confidence. <laughs> so you mentioned a few things about what fabrication means, and excuse my ignorance, but fabrication, what exactly does that entail? What we do is we take a s slab, so a Caesar stone comes in a slab format, uh, about three meters by 1.4, by either 20 or 30 millimeters thick. Yeah. Um, we go out to the site, we take templates um, with a three millimeter masonite, comes back to the factory, and we cut those slabs up into the different uh, components, sure. if you like, um, of the item that's being built. Sure. Uh, viewers might be watching now and wondering what is the importance of Caesar stone in my life and sort of quartz. Uh, it's quite an interesting topic to talk about because when I went behind the scenes and learned more about the product, it is incredible. You mentioned how versatile it is, but what is so great about quartz? And what exactly is quartz and why do we use it? Uh, quartz is ba the basic component of Caesar stone. Um, as I say, it's 93% uh, of the stone. Um, and what you can do with it then is it creates a stable slab um, that can be any color. Okay. So you can have pure white, you can have pretty much anything. A lot of these slabs look like marbles, uh, which is a fairly new development. It looks good okay. um, so that you can have the versatility and the appearance of a marble, um, but with the durability um, of sure. the Caesar stone. Okay. You get it in different finishes, so for many years it just was a polished upper mm, surface. Mm. Um, now you can have it with a matte appearance or with a textured appearance, mm. you know, which really appeals to the designers. Sure. It's obviously not your first time working in Val de Vie. I mean, that estate is absolutely beautiful and everyone's very excited to work on it and to win a house on the estate. Uh, but do you have a longer-standing relationship with the Polo Village? What was the relationship between your company and, and Val de Vie's Polo Village? Um, in terms of Polo Village, um, we were, went in it right from the outset. Um, we engaged with the uh, principal agents um, together with Caesar Stone um, and it's been a privilege with us in terms of um, getting to know the estate mm. um, and the, the stature that they have as a resident, residential estate in Africa. Okay. I must put you on the spot because our contestants have all seen you and they've all thought about how they're going to use these products in their apartments and they're working on that guest bedroom at the moment. Out of what you've seen in terms of creative design, working in fabrication, doing something different, who's got the upper hand? That's a tough one, and I wouldn't like to make a call <laughs> at this stage. Um, to be honest, I think that the stuff that we're fabricating right now for them uh, is very exciting. Okay. And again, our artisans are enjoying what they're doing, so I think we're seeing there's a lot more to come. Okay, so we're seeing cutting-edge apartments being made, basically. Absolutely. Sure, it's absolutely fascinating. Neville, thanks so much for joining us in the loft. It's an absolute honour to have you with us uh, on Afternoon Express. I think this competition is going to be so exciting. Like I said, a viewer is going to get to win one of those apartments, and whichever one you've installed the best goods in is the one they're going to want to win. So thanks for joining us on the show today. Thank Thank you. Mm. Guys, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to find out what more we have on Afternoon Express and particularly with Winner Home. Exactly. And we can't wait to see what our three contestants do with Caesar Stone's beautiful products. Remember, entries for Caesar Stone's Kitchen of the Year 2016 are now open. Now, if you have a beautifully designed kitchen which incorporates Caesar Stone that was installed any time between the 1st of January 2015 and the 31st of July this year, this can be your opportunity to win big. Simply log on to caesarstone.co.za where you can enter and find more details, as well as the T's and C's. So let's get back to the couch with Danilo. Now, when it comes to selling a home, additional features and details can make all the difference. And so often it's true that you are in fact selling a room. An extra room in the house can easily be utilized as a home office, a workspace, a nursery, or a space for a bedroom for family and friends. So here to give us his expert advice is private property CEO and winner home judge Simon Bray. We're spending a lot of time together and I'm looking forward to learning some things more about this guest bedroom. Welcome. 
Thank you, Daniela. Thank you, yeah. Okay, so Simon, let's first begin with this idea of a spare room in a house. Um, is it something that actually adds value to a property when it's being sold or bought? I mean, absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, you've done a property search, we've all done a property search. You often start with a few key criteria in mind, right? You've got your price point in mind, you've got the size of the house in mind, and room count is how people justify house uh, size. Uh -huh. So, uh, you know, we've been doing some pretty fun data modeling of private property, just trying to understand from a global perspective what really influences asking price and what doesn't. Hmm. And room count, the number of rooms in a house, is certainly one of the most statistically relevant elements when it comes to the asking hmm. price and what affects it. I can imagine. So our contestants at the moment are working hard on that guest bedroom and a lot of them have their minds stuck in this idea that it needs to have a bed in it. But that spare room, does it add extra value whether it's a bedroom or whether it's an office or whether it's anything else like a nursery? What is the one that adds the most value to selling a property? Well, I think what's interesting about this particular apartment and where it's positioned, you know, it's out of town. Uh, you're talking about buyers or owners that are probably going to be working from home at least a couple of days of the week. So a home office makes a lot of sense mm. for that space. Uh, but why can't you have both, you know? If you do have a guest from out of town, why can't that office that you use double as a bedroom for your guest? Indeed. Last time we spoke to you about this, you said that there needs to be the sort of Swiss army knife of rooms. It needs to be versatile for anything, for any type of guest that wants to come and stay. But besides that kind of advice, what other advice do you have for our contestants who are preparing that guest bedroom as we speak? Well, I think what's critical about this room is it's the first room. It's easy to overlook it. It's easy to think, okay, this is just the opening salvo, we'll walk past it. But this is probably going to be the difference when you get to the end. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone kind of thinks of the big rooms, but it's, it's doing something clever with a multi-purpose room like this that really yeah. proves design and design talent. Anyone could put a bed in a room, but it's the one who's got that keen, focused eye who's doing the detail that I think will top them in this competition. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think there's the opportunity in a room like this to think about uh, European uh, trends around space saving yes. and small spaces and uh, conceptual furniture ideas. All of that fits nicely with a room uh, like this. Sure. Speaking of which, presentation is key when it comes to one of these spaces. H how do you go at presenting a room in a way that's going to make it valuable to sell? First impressions are anything. I mean, you think of a website like private property, it's effectively a dating website yeah. for your property. <laughs> you know, people <laughs> pass past yours so quickly. Yes. Uh, it's really important to stand out. And uh, 1,600 odd listings come into private property every mm. single day. So if yours isn't uh, punchy, if it doesn't have something fresh and innovative to offer, then it can easily get lost in the noise. Oh, I see. So obviously speaking about the way that uh, obviously I'm interested in is the idea of selling a house and making sure that it's an investment piece. And a lot of people are moving towards the property market and are looking at that. Spaces are limited at the moment. So when is it an ideal time? Or is it ever an ideal time to turn in your house into an extra bedroom, to break down walls in a garage and turn that into another room? When do we make that call? Well, I think that's the great thing about design. You know, good design unlocks the potential uh, and maximizes the value of a property. So if you've got a house and you've got a, an area that you think could be a great additional room, uh, get a good quality designer in, have a look, mm. see what you can do, and I absolutely think it could add value to your own home. Sure. So we've spoken a lot about the sort of buying, selling, investment pieces, but uh, a lot of people are in that renting market. H how does a spare bedroom or a guest bedroom affect rentals from this, the sort of lessee and the lessor's perspective? Well, I mean, South Africa has traditionally been a buy-first market, but we're certainly moving into this time uh, where rentals are far more popular than buying, mainly just because it's too expensive to buy and own your own home these yeah. days. Uh, so additional spaces, unlocking the potential of, of a home can elevate your property's potential with, with potential tenants. And mm. ultimately, you need the best tenants to maximize your investment. So uh, certainly, a, a design like this is important. Sure. So these contestants actually got a lot to put to work here because their guest bedroom seems to be one of the most popular rooms in the house and it's going to add a lot of value to the resale of that property. It's going to add to the aesthetics of the property. It's going to add to the versatility of the property itself. No pressure. Ultimately, it could be the difference between all of the apartments. So I'm looking forward to see what uh, the guys produce. Privateproperty.co.za offers a world of options at your fingertips when it comes to finding the perfect home for you situated in the neighborhood that fits your needs. While visiting the site, you can also enter to stand a chance of winning an apartment on the Valdivia estate by simply answering an easy question.
Ah, oh, Danilo, such a little ninja. <laughs> That's right. This week's question is, what is your favourite guest bedroom? By casting your vote, you stand at a chance to win paint from Plascon to the value of 5,000 Rand. You will also be automatically entered into the grand prize draw where you could win an apartment at Val de Vie valued at over 3 million Rand. So keep your eyes on Afternoon Express every weekday as our three design contestants gradually transform three properties at Val de Vie Estate using finishes provided by Caesar Stone and Plascon. Now, Winner Home is proudly brought to you by Private Property in association with Nedbank. Welcome back to Afternoon Express on this glorious Thursday afternoon on SABC3. Now, make sure you tune in for top billing later this evening at 7.30 on 3. Now, this week, Chris Jafter goes behind the scenes of Isidingo with Tema Sebopedi, better known as the bubbly and ambitious Lerato. Now, off camera, Tema also gives Zumba classes and she puts Chris through his paces. Now, he also spends a day in studio with the young hip-hop star Gigi Lemayne, who, at the age of 20, 22 already has four SA Hip Hop Awards under her belt and she gives him a few beatbox lessons. And Jade Hubner experiences the adrenaline rush of a lifetime as she spends a day at the Sky Grand Prix competition with French pilot and world aerobatics champion Aude Le Mordant, who gives her a chance to earn her wings. And I'm hosting the show tonight, so do not miss it. Right now, though, I can smell something deliciously Mexican in the kitchen with Danilo. Uh, indeed you can. It's all about Mexican on the show today, and my Mexican co-host and chef in the kitchen is Megan Daniels and we've been making something so delicious in the kitchen I've ninjaed back into a new outfit can you see can I you know. tell wow. I don't mind very quickly about these things I uh, wanted to ask you quickly recap what we've done to get to this stage okay so basically where we left off we basically were just um, getting this a little bit brown okay but what's in there you've got we've got the chicken um, with some barbecue sauce the chicken that we just fried off in cano canola oil we've got some barbecue sauce and uh -huh. then just regular homemade okay a little bit of salt that. and pepper in salt there. and pepper corn and then mozzarella cheese for ooey oh, gooeyness and to also stick the what are we calling it a tortilla tortilla together so we've yes. got two one at the top and one at the bottom stack those together fry them on each side yes, so just flip it once so literally when it gets this beautiful crust you want to say just flip it to the other side okay. and then you literally go. So it's not something that you have to stand and turn. Oh. Just one time. I like the way you work. Just one yeah, time. Okay. One <laughs> so next for us to create is what? Guacamole. Oh, my favorite. Yeah. You have to have something like this with kind of like a dip or something like that. So okay. guacamole, what better? It was created by the Aztecs. So... It's You've like got Wikipedia, perfect. you do, yeah. hey, don't you? Tell, <laughs> me, like more. Tell me more about the Aztecs and how they incorporated guacamole. No, Please tell no, me. No. Tell us. But what about your little puns that come in there with the Aztecs? No, no, no puns. Just want you to explain this history because clearly you know a lot. No, that's where <laughs> <it> <laughs> Love it. Putting Megan through her paces because she thinks she can really do my paces in the kitchen. Uh -huh. Okay, let's go. I don't want to talk about it, okay? How do we do this then? Okay. Let's, let's just you can <laughs> slice a head. <laughs> go for it. Oh, you're sulking. <laughs> okay, there we go. Let's put this like this. And we're just going to pop this the... Bowl. With everything in it. With, obviously, I'm taking all the stuff I'm out. Taking that out, yeah. Okay. There we go. Don't need to. It's yeah. a nice soft one. There you go. I think this is a trick I learned as well, by the way, to get all okay. of the stuff out. And you also keep your fingers nice and clean, which gets all the guacamole out. Cool. So you can do those two. I'm going to start chopping these tomatoes over here. Cool. I'm just going to halve them because you want to keep everything quite chunky. and. Sorry, do you want both of these? Or just one? Yes, you can do both. Okay, cool. I want to steal this knife from you then. All the guests want to eat today, so... Oh, that's true. And Jeannie, literally, throughout every ad break, I've been having to smack her hand as she keeps coming into the <laughs> kitchen to try and steal our ingredients. <laughs> so I'm hoping everyone's super hungry as well to enjoy this. It's so delicious. And mm. it's really nice finger food, so it's like the perfect uh, dish to kind of make for guests. If yeah. everybody's just so informal and yeah. just grab a little bit of... It's like one of those Everything. social, social things that you can do. You get all the ingredients together in a little bowl separately. Everyone can make their own one, fry them up. And I've got a bit of a story to tell you. When we were young, still at varsity, I was very, very naughty. Um, don't tell my parents <laughs> that. I wasn't actually that naughty. My cousin, uh, when we used to come home like super early, I'm talking about like 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning, she used oh, to make okay. these. She used to have these wraps. She used to put on the stove and put the whole bunch of flavors, but weird things, because clearly we weren't thinking clearly. But we put mm -hmm. a whole bunch of things in there. We'd fold it to the other side, add some cheese. Oh, delicious. Well, Any then time you've got some day. good memories of that. Oh, yeah, we just kind of put in the quesadilla in first. <laughs> okay. There we go. So, because you've already done your technique of squishing it out of yes. the skin, if not, we can just go into it and really, really rustic. I mean, you literally cool. just, you don't want it to be smooth and 
you know. Oh, I see what you're saying. So we're not actually making a guacamole in the essence that we're going to be uh, sort well, of. Well, guacamole isn't traditionally it. smooth. I mean, you could literally do chunks oh. in it because there's onion. There's all kinds of really good ingredients. So. I didn't know that. Okay, because I understand guacamole to be the one you actually put in a food processor, you make it creamy, you add garlic, you add cream. You could do it either way, but I think okay. tradition, like people have moved away from that and they've really kept everything so rustic, so chunky. Okay, um, cool. I'm going to go in here with a little bit of olive oil, just to like make it a little bit velvety. Yes. <gasps> Salt and pepper. When does the lemon come in? Ever? We're not doing lemon, we are sticking traditional and doing lime. Okay, well that's as good. Anything that's a little bit taut. Ta so what's not, what, not taut is the wrong word. Tart? tart. Is tart I think the it's right tart. word? Sour, <laughs> I guess is a good one. Sour is not a, a great <laughs> word. <laughs> Sounds like it's got a negative connotation. Okay. There we go. We're just going to do that. So just a quick recap of what we put in here. You've got your avocados, two of them. We've okay. squeezed out obviously the inside, chopped up some uh, baby tomatoes in here, thrown in some salt and pepper, and we're squeezing now two limes in here. Well, um, we've just done the one. This okay. is just going to go on the cup for anyone else that just wants okay. to. Now what's next? Have a squeeze of lime. So we can... Decant. Put that into there, perfect. Ta-da! Oh, this looks so amazing. And then what do you do with this? How do you serve your Well, that tortilla? we're going to do a little bit of these pickled jalapenos. So okay. you literally just chop them up really finely. What's great is they already come like this, so... You could mm. use fresh, I mean chili, anything like that. Like that. Oh, yummy. Just for a little bit of bite. If you, you don't like to. the bite, you don't have to. It's not Mexican if it ain't got no bite. That's true. <laughs> so okay. there we go. Delicious. Yeah. So serve what, it like that. We've basically got these two. So traditionally, it's actually folded in half, like a half moon. Uh -huh. But actually, what people have started doing is cutting just into pizza slices. Pizza slices. Ah. Every, so there's two on top of each other over here, though. So don't know one must take so. the whole like <laughs> stack of things. And the nice thing that you can also do, obviously, if you make different versions of the same thing, you can make a whole bunch of them, cut them up into pizza slices, and then everyone can taste one of each, as opposed to everyone having their own one with just one yeah, flavor. Yeah, that's in the true. Middle. Good idea. Because then you literally are going to be doing that. Other suggestions yeah. of, of, of um, fillings? Ooh, traditionally it's actually beans. So you do like refried beans, which is actually just beans blitzed up and then oh, you I actually see. just fry it. So vegetarian off. version. Yeah, you could do that. You could do shrimp, which is like my favorite. So, yeah, it actually also traditionally is mashed potato, which is okay. really strange. Ooh. But that is yeah, pretty interesting. Like I guess that. if it's traditional, we do not judge. There we go. Oh, that looks so amazing. Meg, you've done a stellar job. High bon fives. Tea. Well done. <laughs> Megan Daniels, our chef in the kitchen with us today. If you guys want to be making this recipe, you can go and find it on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. Everything we make on that show is on that website. It is absolutely amazing. If you obviously have wanting ideas for dinner for today or for any other time of the week, make sure that you go to our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. Ta-da, everybody! Oh, you guys are just amazing. This and? looks sensational. Please do start dishing. We've had this... I've you can use your fingers. We have messaged us before on the show often to say, your guests don't want to eat the food. And we're like, it's, it is edible, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, TV yeah. food. Totally Please good. take it and eat it. It is delicious. Thank it's always really, really nice. good. Please yeah. help yourself. You. Now, Kateria, I want to ask you, do you have oh, yeah, a dress yeah. that you've done for a particular celebrity that yeah. stands out? Like, you're the favourite one you've ever done. Do you get yeah. sentimental about your work? Yeah, but I mean, every dress we saw, it's, you know, it's, 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 you can't choose your kids, you know, you can't say, I put this fit, the favorite kid, but I mean, all of them My are. parents definitely <laughs> have a favorite child, yeah. it was me. Jeannie made it clear yeah. that I definitely wasn't the favorite, oh, so yeah. we've got that clear out of the way. You are a favorite child. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Okay, so more, I want to hear all about, so which, which are the dresses that stand out for you? Um, sure, there's, there's, there's quite a lot, actually. I mean, obviously, you know, boy tea. We've done a lot of, uh, I think, um, red carpet, you know, dresses for Dino Mokese, which stands out. Yeah. Uh, recently, Lerato Khalyakho, that stood out for, for, for me. I mean, I, you know, it's just that I can't go all the way back, but I've just got to remember the, the dresses that we've done recently. You know, exactly. So, yeah. Who would be your dream person to dress? Locally or internationally? Both. Both. Oh. Uh, locally, I would still, uh, Connie Ferguson. Oh, oh yeah? yeah? She's yeah. such a lady. Listen, she's quite a lady. Can, can I ask you something, obviously, because yeah. you do a lot of female uh, outfits and stuff, and a lot of women are looking for inspiration, new seasons, winter's yeah. obviously here, and people are looking for some advice, like top tips for, for women for this coming season in terms of their style, fashion, colours that are in, textures, Silicon fabrics. Well, it's, it's important that you, you go consult with people who are in the industry, who know, you know, in terms of fashion and trends. Which we've done, you know, on our show. <laughs> yeah, okay. You know? Tell us, tell us. So I, I guess it's important that you, you don't really necessarily follow trends, because, I mean, the style is within. Yeah. Exactly. So I guess, you know, it's all about your gut feeling, what, what really works for you and colour. If you know your colour, you know your cuts, it's important. You know, that if you have those two keys and the colour, cut, 
and have a, a good start. A class, absolutely. <laughs> and carrots. Yeah. Got to mix diamonds. It's carrots. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, well, yeah. So That's I think really if advice. you've got those, yeah, if you've got those two on lockdown, you're good to go. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you so much to all of thank our guests. So I'm so excited about this. Please do dish up. Yeah. Now, join us again tomorrow for Afternoon Express. And remember to get here early. It's Friday. No. And during the first 15 minutes of the show, we're going to be chatting to two very talented South African documentary filmmakers from the Encounters Film Festival. And in the kitchen, we're making the ultimate frankfurter with sweet pickled relish and Clem has basically guaranteed us that it's going to be the most delicious thing that we've eaten this year on the show. Oh. And of course the Encounters Film Festival, if you are interested in that, I think it's running until the end of the weekend. Oh, epic. And that's definitely going to be worth going. I don't know about you, but I'm a closet nerd that I'm a sucker <laughs> for documentaries. No, no, me too. All, and we're producing some really good ones locally too, so exactly. I'm very excited to see what these guys have to bring yeah. for us. So support your local filmmakers. Yes, <laughs> thanks for joining us on Afternoon Express today. We'll see you same time, same place tomorrow. Good night, happy eating. Ciao. Tuck in, everybody. Mwah. I'm so excited to try this. How is it? The hottest address on TV is Winner Home on Afternoon Express. Proudly brought to you by Private Property in association with Nedbank. Another Feel Good Production. How are you doing, YouTube fam? Thank you so much for watching, sharing and commenting. We love hearing from you, so be sure to keep up to date with all things Afternoon Express by clicking the subscribe button right here.